Hello, this is the Silver Watchman, and welcome back to the Bible. Now, we're going to be picking up where we left off last time, which is Second Chronicles chapter 18, verse number 25. Let us begin. Then the king of Israel said to... Then the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and return him to Oman, the governor of the city. And to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this fellow in prison, and feed him with the bread of affliction, and water of affliction, until I return in peace. But Micaiah said, Have you ever returned in peace? The Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Take heed, all you people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said, Jeho said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle, but you put on your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went into battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots who were with him, saying, Fight with no one small or great, but only with the king of Israel. So it was when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat that they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore they surrounded him to attack. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. And God diverted, from, diverted them from him. So it was when the captains of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. <laughs> now a certain man drew a bow at random and struck the king of Israel between the joints of, of his armor. So he said to the driver of his chariot, Turn around and take me out of the battle, for I am wounded. <laughs> the battle increased that day. The king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot, facing the Syrians until evening. And about the time of sunset, he died. Second Chronicles, chapter 19. Then Jehoshaphat, the king of, of Judah, returned safely to his house in Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to, to meet him. And said to King Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Therefore the wrath of the Lord is upon you. Nevertheless, good things are found in you, and that you have removed the wooden images from the land, and prepared your heart to seek God. So Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem. And he went out again among the people from Beersheba to the mountains of Ephraim and brought them back to the Lord, God of their fathers. Then he set judges in the land throughout all the fortified cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed to what you are doing, for you do not judge for a man for man, but for the Lord, who is with you in the, judge, in the judgment. Now therefore, let the fear of the Lord be upon you, and take care to do it, for there is no iniquity in the Lord our God, no partiality, nor taking of bribes. Moreover, in Jerusalem, for the judgment of the Lord, and for controversies, Jehoshaphat appointed some of the Levites and priests and some of the chief fathers of Israel when he returned to Jerusalem. And he commanded them, saying, Thus you shall act in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a loyal heart. Whatever case comes to you from your brethren who dwell in their cities, whether of bloodshed or of offenses against the law or commandment, against statutes or ordinances, you shall warn them, 
lest they trespass against the Lord, and wrath come upon you and your brethren. Do this, and you will not be guilty, and take notice. And Moriah the chief priest is over you in all matters of the Lord, and Zebediah the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, for all the king's matters. Also the Levites will be officials before you. Behave courageously, and the Lord will be good, will be with the good. Second Chronicles chapter 20 And it happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are on Hazazan, Tamar, which is en -Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. <laughs> then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, in the new house of the Lord, before the new court, and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of all the nations in your land, in your hand? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? You are not our God, who is, who drove out, are you not our God, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwelt in it, and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. And now, here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are, rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives, and their children, stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jez Jahaziel, the son, of the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. And he said, Listen, all of you of Judah, all you of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid or dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down against them, and they will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the book, at the brook before the wilderness of Jerul. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. 
O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be, or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Joseph had bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Joseph had stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who would sing to the Lord, and who should praise the beauty of the holiness. As they went out before the army, and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitudes and saw the and saw the, and there the, there were their their dead bodies <sighs> fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. When Joseph and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies, and precious jewelry which they stripped off for themselves, and more than they could carry away, and there were three days gathering the spoil, because there was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Baraka, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of that place is called the Valley of Baraka until this day. And then they returned, every man of Judah and Jerusalem, with Jehoshaphat in front of them, to go back to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. So they came to Jerusalem with stringed instruments and harps and trumpets to the house of the Lord, and the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest all around. So Jehoshaphat was king over Judah. He was thirty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned twenty-five years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Shohi. And he walked away, and he walked in the way of his father, Asa, and did not turn aside from it, doing what is right in the sight of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away, for as yet the people had not directed their hearts to the God of their fathers. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, first and last, indeed they are written in the book of Jehu, the son of Hanani, which is mentioned in the book of the kings of Israel. After this, Jehoshaphat king of Judah allied himself with Ahaziah king of Israel, who acted very wickedly, and he, and he allied himself to make ships to go to Tarshish, and they made the ships go to the and they made the ships in Ezion Geber. But Eliezer, the son of Dodava of Marilesh, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, 
because you have allied yourself with Ahaziah. The Lord has destroyed your works. Then the ships were wrecked, so they were not able to go to Tarshish. Second Chronicles, chapter 21. And Jehoshaphat rested with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. Then Jehoram, his son, reigned in his place. He had brothers, the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah, Jehiel, Zechariah, Ezrahu, Michael, and Shephatiah, all these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. Their father gave them great gifts of silver, gold, and precious things, with fortified cities in Judah. But he gave the kingdom to Jehoram, because he was the firstborn. Now when Jehoram was established over the kingdom of his father, he strengthened himself, and killed all his brothers with the sword, and also others of the prince of, Ish of Israel, others of the princes of Israel. Jehoram was thirty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem, and he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, just as the house of Ahab had done. For he had had the daughter of Ahab as a wife, as a wife, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yet the Lord would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant that he had made with David, since he had promised to give a lamp to him and to his sons forever. In his days, Edom revolted against Judah's authority and made a king over themselves. So Jehoram went out with his officers and all his chariots with him, and he rose by night and attacked the Edomites who had surrounded him and the captains of the chariots. Thus Edom had been in revolt against Judah's authority to this day. At that time, Libna revol revolted against his rule because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. Moreover, he made high, made high places in the mountains of Judah and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit harlotry and led Judah astray. And a letter came to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus says the Lord God of your father David, because you have not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat, your father, or in the ways of Asa, king of Judah, but have walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, and have made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to play the harlot, like the harlotry over the house of, of Ahab, and also ha have killed your brothers, those of your father's household, who were better than yourself. Behold, the Lord will strike your people with a serious affliction, your children, your wives, and all your possessions. And you will become very sick with the disease of your intestines until your intestines come out by reason of the sickness day by day. Moreover, the Lord stood up against Jehoram the spirit of the Philistines and the Arabians who were near the Ethiopians. And they came up to Judah and invaded it and carried away all the, all the possessions that were found in the king's house and also his sons and his wives so that there was not a son left to him except Jehoaz, the youngest of his sons. 
After all this, the Lord struck him in his intestines with an incurable disease. Then it happened in the course of, of time that at the end of two years that his intestines came out because of his sickness, so that, so that he died in severe pain. And his people made no burning for him, like the burning for his fathers. He was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. And to no one's sorrow departed. However, they buried him in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. Second Chronicles chapter 22 Then the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah, his youngest son, king in his place. For the raiders who came with the Arabians into the camps had killed all the older sons. So Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned. Ahaziah was 42 years old when he became king, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Athaliah, the granddaughter of Amri. He also walked in the ways of the house of in the ways of the, of the house of Ahab, for his mother advised him to do wickedly. Therefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and like the like the house of Ahab, for they were his counselors after the death of his father, to his destruction. He also followed their advice and went out to, and went with Jehoram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Hazael, king of Syria, at Ramath Gilead. And the Syrians wounded Joram. Then he returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds which he had received at Ramah. Then he fought against Hazael, king of Syria, and Azariah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, and went down to see Jehoram, the son of Ahab, in Jezreel, because he was sick. His going to Jehoram was God, was God's occasion for Azael's downfall. For when he arrived, he went on, uh, he went out with Jehoram against Jehu, the son of Nimshi whom the Lord had appointed to cut off the house of Ahab. And it happened when Jehu was executing judgment on the house of Ahab, and he found the princes of Judah and the sons of Ahaziah's brothers, who served Ahaziah, that he killed them. Then he searched for Ahaziah, and they caught him. He was hiding in Samaria, and brought him to Jehu when they had killed them. They buried him, because, they said, he is the son of Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with all his heart. So the house of Ahaziah had no one to assume power over the kingdom. Now when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal heirs of the house of Judah. But Jehoshaphat, but Jehoshabith, the daughter of the king, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons, who were being murdered, and put him and his nurse in a bedroom. So Jehoshabith, the daughter of King Jeho Jehoram, the wife of Jehodia, the priest, for she was the sister of Ahaziah, hid him from Athaliah, so that she did not kill, kill him. And he was hidden with them in the house of God for six years. Well, Athaliah reigned over the land. Second Chronicles, chapter 23.
In the seventh year of Jehodiah, in the seventh year, Jehodiah strengthened himself and made a covenant with the captains of hundreds. Azariah, the son of Jehoram, Ishmael, the son of Jehonanan, Azariah, the son of Obed, Ma'ad, Sia, the son of Adadiah, Elis, Elish, Elish, and Elishaphat, the son of Zikri. And they went through Judah and gathered the Levites from all the cities of Judah and the chief fathers of Israel. And they came to Jerusalem. Then all the assembly made a covenant with the king in the house of God, and he said to them, Behold, the king's son shall reign. As the Lord has said of the sons of David, This is what you shall do. One third of you entering on this Sabbath of the priests and Levites shall be keeping watch over the doors. One third shall be at the, at the king's house, and one third at the gate of the foundation. All the people shall be in the courts of the house of the Lord. But let no one come into the house of the Lord except the priests and those of the Levites who serve. They may go in, for they are holy. But all the people shall keep the, keep the watch of the Lord. And the Levites shall surround the king on all sides, every man with his weapons in his hand. And whoever comes into the house, let him be put to death. You are to be with the king when he comes out, and when he goes out, when he comes and goes out. So the Levites and all Judah did according to all that Jehodiah the priest commanded. And each man took his men who were, who were to be on duty on the Sabbath, and those who were going off duty on the Sabbath. For Jehodiah the priest had not dismissed the divisions. And Jehodiah the priest gave to the captains of hundreds the spears and the large and small shields which belonged to King David, which had belonged to King David, that were in the temple of God. Then he said all the people, every man with his weapon in his hand, on the right side of the temple, to the left side of the temple, along by the altar and by the temple, all around the king. And they brought out the king's son, put a crown on him, and gave him the testimony, and made him king. Then Jehodiah, his sons, anointed him, and said, Long live the king! Now when Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king. She came to the people in the temple of the Lord. Then she looked. When she looked, there was a king standing by, by his pillar at the entrance. And the leaders and trumpeteers were by the king. All the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. Also the singers with musical instruments and those who led in praise. So Athaliah tore her clothes and said, Treason, treason. And Jehodiah the priest brought out the captains of hundreds who were set over at the army and said to them, Take her outside under guard and slay her with the sword, whoever, and slay with the sword whoever follows her. For the priests had said, Do not kill her in the house of the Lord. So they seized her, and she went by way of the entrance of the house gate into the king's house, and they killed her there. When Jehodiah made a covenant between himself and the people, made a covenant between himself, the people, and the king, 
that they should be the Lord's people. And all the people went to the temple of Baal, tore it down, and broke in pieces its altars and images, and killed Matan, the priests of Baal, before the altars. Also Jehodi appointed the oversight of the house of the Lord to the hand of the priests, the Levites, whom David had assigned in the house of the Lord, to offer burnt offerings of the Lord, as it is written in the law of Moses, with rejoicing and with singing, as it was established by David. And he set the gatekeepers at the gates of the house of the Lord, so that no one who was in, the, was in any way unclean should enter. Then he, should, then he took the captains of hundreds, the nobles, the governors of the people, and all the people of the land, and brought the king down from the house of the Lord. And they went through the upper gate to the king's house, and set the king on the throne of the kingdom. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet, for they had slain Athaliah with the sword. Second Chronicles chapter 24 Joash was seven, was seven, seven years old when he became king. And he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zebiah of Beersheba. Joash did was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of, of Jehodia the priest. And Jehodia took two wives for him. He had sons and daughters. Now it happened after this that Joash set his heart in repairing the house of the Lord. Then he gathered the priests and the Levites and said to them, go out, into, go out to the cities of Judah and gather from all Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year and see that you do it quickly. However, the Levites did not do it quickly. So the king called Jehodiah, the chief priest, and said to him, why have you not required the Levites to bring, to bring in from Judah and from Jerusalem the collection according to the commandment of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and of the assembly of Israel for the tabernacle of witness? For the son of Athaliah, the wicked woman, had broken into the house of God and had also presented all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord to the balls. Then the kings, then at the king's command, they made a chest and set it outside the gate of the house of the Lord. And they made a, a proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem to the house of the Lord. The collection that Moses, a servant of God, had imposed on Israel in the wilderness. Then all the leaders and all the people rejoiced brought their contributions and put them into the into the chest until it had, until all had given. So it was at that time when the chest was brought into the king's official by the by the hand of the Levites, and when they saw that there was much money at the king's scribe, and the high priest's officer took and the high priest's officer came and emptied the chest and took it, returned it to its place. Thus they, they did day by day, and gathered money in abundance. The king and Jehodia gave it to those who did work of this service of the house of the Lord, and they hired masons and carpenters to repair the house of the Lord, and also those who worked in iron and bronze to restore the house of the Lord. So the workmen labored, and the work was completed by them. They restored the house of God to its original condition, 
and reinforced it. When they had finished, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehodia, and they made from it articles for the house of the Lord, articles for serving, an offering, spoons and vessels of gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the days of Jehodiah. But Jehodiah grew old and was full of days, and he died. He was 130 years old when he died. And they buried him in the city of David among, all, among the kings, because he had done good, done good in Israel, both toward God and his house. Now after the, now after the death of Jehodiah, the leaders of Judah came and bowed to the king, and the king listened to them. Therefore they left the house of the Lord, God of their fathers, and served wooden images and idols, and wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem because of their trespass. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them back to the Lord, and they testified against them, but they would not listen. Then the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehodiah, the priest, who stood above the people and said to them, Thus says God, Why do you transgress the commandments of the Lord, so that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord, he also has forsaken you. So they conspired against him, and at the command of the king they stoned him with stones in the court of the house of the Lord. Thus Joash the king did not remember the kindness which Jehodiah his father had done to them, done to him. But he killed his son, and as he died, he said, The Lord look on it and repay. So it happened in the spring of the year that came, in the spring of the year that the army of Syria came up against him, and they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the leaders of the people among, among the people, from among the people, and said all their spoil to the king of, of Damascus. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men, but the Lord delivered a very great army to their hand, into their hand, because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. So they executed judgment against Joash, and when they had withdrawn from him, for they have left him severely wounded, his own servants conspired against him because of the blood of the sons of Jehodiah, the priest, and killed him on his bed. So he died, and they buried him in the city of David, but they did not bury him in the tombs of the kings. These are the ones who conspired against him. Zabad the son of Shemeth, the, Am the Ammonitus, Jehozabad, the son of Shimrith, the Moabitus. Now concerning his sons and the many oracles about him, the repairing of the house of God, indeed they are written in the annals of the book of the kings, then Amaziah his son reigned in this place. Second Chronicles, chapter 25. Amaziah was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehodia. No, Jehodan of Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a loyal heart. Now it happened, as soon as the kingdom was established for him, that he executed the servants who had murdered his father, the king. However, he did not execute their children, but did as is, but did as is, is written in the law of the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying, The father shall not be put to death for their children, nor shall the children be put to death for their fathers. But a person shall die for his own sin. Moreover, 
Amaziah gathered Judah together and set over captains of thousands and captains of hundreds according to their father's houses throughout all Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered them from twenty years old and above and found them to be three hundred thousand choice men able to go to war who could handle spear and shield. He also hired one hundred thousand mighty men of valor from Israel for one hundred talents of silver. But a man of God came to him, saying, O king, do not let the army of Israel go with you, for the Lord is not with Israel, not with any of the children of Ephraim. But if you go, be gone. Be strong in battle. Even so, God shall make you fall before the enemy, for God has the power to help and to overthrow. Then Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do about the hundred talents which I have given to the troops of Israel? And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give you much more than this. So Amaziah discharged the troops that had come to him from Ephraim to go back home. Therefore their anger was greatly aroused against Judah, and they returned home in anger. Then Amaziah strengthened himself in the valley of salt and killed ten thousand of the people of Seir. Also the children of Judah brought cap took captive ten thousand alive and brought them to the top of the rock and cast them down from the top of the rock. So that they were all so that they all were dashed in pieces. But as for the soldiers of the army, which Amaziah had discharged, so that they would not go with him to battle, they raided the cities of Judah from Samaria to Beth Haran, killed three thousand in them, and took much spoil. Now it was so after Amaziah came from the slaughter of the Edomites that he brought the gods of the people of Seir, set them up to be his gods, and bowed before them, and burned incense to them. Therefore the anger of the Lord was aroused against Amaziah, and sent him a prophet who said to him, why have you sought the gods of the people which you could not res which could not rescue their own people from your hand? So it was, as he talked with him, that the king said to him, Have we made you the king's counsellor? Cease. Why should you be killed? And the prophet ceased, and said, I know that God is determined to destroy you. Because you, have, because you have done this, and not heeded my advice. Now Amaziah, the king of Judah, asked advice, and sent to Joash, the son of Jehoaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let us face one another in battle. And Joash, king of Israel, sent to Amaziah, king of Judah, saying, The thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son as wife. And a wild beast that was in Lebanon passed by and trampled the thistle. Indeed, you say, you have defeated the Edomites, and your heart has lifted up the boast. Stay at home now. Why should you meddle with trouble, that you should fall, you and Judah with you? But Amaziah would not heed, for it came from God, that he might give them into the hand of their enemies, because he sought the gods of Edom. So Joash, the king, Joash, king of Israel, went out, he and Amaziah, king of Judah, faced one another 
at Beth Shemesh, which belongs to Judah. And Judah was defeated by Israel. Every, and every man fled to his tent. And Joash, the king of Israel, captured Amaziah, king of Judah. This son of Joash, the son of Jehoaz, at Beth Shemesh. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and broke down the wall of Jerusalem, from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, four hundred cubits. And he took all the gold and silver, all the articles that were found in the house of God, with Obed-Edom, the treasures of the king's house, and, the ho and hostages, and returned to Samaria. Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived fifteen years after the death of Joash, the son of Jehoaz, king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, from first to last, indeed, are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel? After the, after the time that Amaziah turned away from following the Lord, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lakshish. But they sent after him to Lakshish and killed him there. Then they brought him on horses and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. Second Chronicles, chapter 26. Now all the people at Judah took Uzziah, who, had 16, who was 16 years old, and made him king instead of his father Amaziah. He built Elath and restored it to Judah. After the king rested with his fathers, Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to the, all that his father Amaziah had done. He saw God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Now he went out and made war against the Philistines, and broke down the wall of Gath, the wall of Jebneth, and the wall of Ashdod. And he built cities around Ashdod, and among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines, against the Arabians who lived near Gerbal, and against the Mennites. May, Meu, Meu Knights. Also, the Ammonites brought tribute to Uziah. His fame spread as far as the entrance of Egypt, for he became exceedingly strong. And Uziah built towers in Jerusalem, at the corner gate, and at the valley gate, and the corner buttress of the wall. Then he fortified them. He also built towers in the desert, dug many wells for the, for he had much livestock, both in the lowlands and in the plains. He also had farmers and vine dressers in the mountains and in Carmel, for he loved the soil. Moreover, Uziah had an army of fighting men who went out to war by companies according to the Number on the roll prepared by Jael, the scribe, Maaseah, the officer, under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains. The total number of chief officers and the mighty men of valor was 2,600. And under their authority was an army of 307,500 that made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. Then Uziah prepared for them the entire army, shields, spears, helmets, body armor, bows, and slings to cast stones. And he made devices in Jerusalem, invented by skillful men to be on the towers, 
and on the corners to shoot arrows and large stones. So his, flames, so his fame spread far and wide, for he was marvelously helped till he became strong. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for, his tran for he transgressed against the Lord his God by entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. So Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him were eighty priests of the Lord, valiant men, and they withstood King Uzziah and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have trespassed. You shall have no honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah became furious, and he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was angry with the priests, leprosy broke out on his forehead. Before the priests of the house of the Lord, in the house of the Lord, beside the in, beside the incense altar. <coughs> and Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked at him. And there, on his forehead, was a leprosy. So they thrust him out of the, out of that place. Indeed, also hurried to get it out. Indeed, he also hurried to get out because the Lord had struck him. King Uzziah was a leper until the day of his death. He dwelt in a isolated house because he was a leper, for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. Then Jotham, his son, was over the king's house judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah, from first to last, the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amoz, wrote, So Uzziah rested with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in a field of burial, which belonged to the kings, for they, for they said he is a leper. Then Jotham, his son reigned in this place. Second Chronicles, chapter 27. Jotham was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah had done although he did not enter the temple of the Lord, but still the people acted corruptly. He built the upper gate of the house of the Lord, and he built extensively on the wall of Ophel. Moreover, he built cities in the mountains of Judah, and on the forests he built fortresses and towers. He also fought with the king of the Ammonites, and defeated, the, and defeated them. And the people of Ammon gave him in that year one hundred talents of silver, ten thousand cores of wheat, and ten thousand of barley. The people of Ammon paid this to him in the second and third year also. So Jotham became mighty because he had prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all his wars and his ways, indeed they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. So Jotham rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. Then Ahaz his son reigned in his place. Second Chronicles chapter 28 Ahaz was twenty years old when he became king, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem, and he did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord, as his father David had done. For he had walked in the ways of, a king, of the kings of Israel, and made molded images for the balls. He burned incense in the valley of the son of Himnam, and burned his children in the fire according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. 
and he sacrificed and burnt incense on the high places, on the hills, and under every green tree. Therefore the Lord his God delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria, and they defeated him, and carried away a great multitude of, of them as captives, and brought them to Damascus. Then he was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel, who defeated him with a great slaughter. For Pekah, the son of Remaliath, killed 120,000 in Judah in one day, all valiant men, because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. Zikri, a mighty man of Ephraim, killed Masiah, the king, the king's son, Akrazam, Ak Azrikam, the officer over the house, and Elkanah, who was second to the king. The children of Israel carried away captive of the brethren, 200,000 women, sons, and daughters. And they also took away much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was Oded. And he went out before the army that came to Samaria and said to them, Look, because the Lord God of your fathers was angry with Judah, he has delivered them into your hand. But you have killed them in a rage that has reached that reaches up to heaven. And now you propose to force the children of Judah and Jerusalem to be your male and female slaves. But are you not also guilty before the Lord your God? Now hear me, therefore, and return the captives, whom you have taken captive from your brethren. For the fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you. Then some of the heads of the children of Ephraim, Azariah, the son of jo Johanan, Barakiah, the son of Mishilimath, Jehez Jehezkiah, the son of Shalom, and Amasa, the son of Had Had Hadlai, stood up against those who came from the war and said to them, you shall not bring the captives there, for you already offended the, have, already, have offended the Lord. You intend to add our sins, add to our sins and to our guilt, for our guilt was, is great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. So the armed men left, left the captives and the spoil before the leaders and all the assembly. Then the men who were de designated by name rose up and took and took the captives, and from the spoil they closed all who were naked among them, dressed them, and gave them sandals, and gave them food and drink, and anointed them. And they let all the feeble ones ride on donkeys, so they brought them to their brethren at Jericho, the city of palm trees. Then they returned to Samaria. At the same time, King Ahaz sent to the kings of Assyria to help him, for again the Edomites had come, attacked Judah, and carried away captives. The Philistines had also had invaded the cities of the lowlands and of the south of Judah, and he had taken Beth Shemesh, Aijan, Gedaroth, Sakath, with its villages, Timnah with its villages, and Gimzo with its villages, and they dwelt there. For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz, king of Israel, for they had encouraged moral decline in Judah, and had been continually unfaithful to the Lord. Also Tiglah the Pileser, the king of Assyria, came to him, and distressed him, and did not assist him, for Ahaz took part of the treasures from the house of the Lord, from the house of the king, and from the leaders, and gave it to the king of Assyria. But he did not help him. Now in the time of his distress, King Ahaz became increasingly unfaithful to the Lord, that is, that king Ahaz, for he sacrificed to the gods of Damascus, which he had, which had defeated him, saying, Because the gods of the kings of Syria helped them, 
I will sacrifice to them that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. So Ahaz gathered the articles of the house of God, cut in pieces the articles of the house of God, shut up the doors of the house of the Lord, and made for himself altars in every corner of Jerusalem. And in every single city of Judah he made high places to burn incense to other gods, and provoked to anger the Lord God of his fathers. Now the rest of his... The rest of his acts and all his ways from first to last, indeed they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. So Ahaz rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the city, in Jerusalem. But they did not bring him to the tombs of the kings of Israel. Then Hezekiah his son reigned in his place. Second Chronicles chapter 29 Hezekiah became king when he was twenty-five years old, and he reigned twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father had done. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. Then he brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them in the east square, and said to them, Hear me, Levites, now sanctify yourselves. Sanctify the house, of, the house of, of the Lord God, of your fathers, and carry out the rubbish from the holy place. For our fathers have trespassed and done evil in the eyes of the Lord, our God, and they have forsaken him and turned their faces away from him. From the dwelling places, and have forsaken him and have turned their faces away from the dwelling places of the Lord, and turned their backs on him. They have also shut up the doors of the vestibule, put out the lamps, and have not burned incense or offered burnt offerings in the holy place to the Lord, to the God of Israel. Therefore the wrath of, of the Lord fell upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he has given them up to trouble, to desolation, and to jeering, as you see with your eyes. For indeed, because of, this, because of this, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and daughters and our wives are, ca are in captivity. Now, it is in my heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. S my sons, do not be negligent now. For the Lord has chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, that you should minister to him, and burn incense. Then these Levites arose, Mahath, the son of Amasai, and Joel, the son of Azariah, of the sons of the Kohathites, of the sons of Merari, Kish, the son of Abdi, Azariah, the son of Jehalalel, of the Gershonites, Joah, the son of Zim, Zima, and Eden, the son of Joah, of the sons of Elisaphan, Shimri, and Jeel, the sons of Asaph, Zechariah, and Mataniah, the sons of Heman, Jehiel, and Shimei, and the sons of Jeduthun, Shemaiah and Uziel, and they sank to, and they gathered their brethren, sanctified themselves, and went according to the commandment to the, com, to, the to, to the commandment of the king, at the word of the Lord to cleanse the to cleanse the house of the Lord. Then the priests went in, went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it and brought out all the debris that was found in the temple of the Lord to the court of the house of the Lord. And the Levites took it out and carried it to, Brook to the Brook Kidron. Now they, now they began to sanctify on the first day of the first month 
on the eighth day of the month, they came to the festival of the, of the Lord. So they sanctified the house of the Lord in eight days. And on the sixteenth day of the first month, they finished. Then they said, Then they went in, into the king, went into king Hezekiah and said, We have cleansed all the house of the Lord, the altar of burnt offerings, with, it, with all its articles, and a table of showbread with all its articles. Moreover, all the articles which King Ahaz in his reign had cast aside in his transgression, we had prepared and sanctified. And there they are, before the altar of the Lord. Then King Hezekiah rose early, gathered the rulers of the city, and went up to the house of the Lord. And they brought seven bulls, seven rams, seven lambs, and seven male goats for, for a sin offering, for the kingdom, for the sanctuary, and for Judah. Then he commanded the priests, the sons of Aaron, to offer them on the altar of the Lord. So they killed the bulls. And the priests received the blood and sprinkled it on the altar. Likewise, they killed the rams and sprinkled the blood on the altar. They also killed the lambs and sprinkled the blood on the altar. Then they brought out the male goats for the sin offering before the king and the assembly. And they laid their hands on them. And the priests killed them, and they presented their blood on the altar as a sin offering to make an atonement for all Israel. For the king commanded that the burnt offering and the sin offering be made for all Israel. And he stationed the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals, with stringed instruments, and with harps according to the commandment of David, of Gad the, the king's seer, and of Nathan the prophet. For thus was the commandment of the Lord by his prophets. The Levites stood with the instruments of David, and the priests with the trumpets. Then Hezekiah commanded them to offer burnt offerings burnt offering on the altar. And when the burnt offering began, the song of the Lord also began, with the trumpets and with the instruments of David, king of Israel. So all the assembly worshipped. The singers sang, and the trumpeters sounded. All this continued until the burnt offering was finished. And when they had finished offering the king, and all who were present with him, bowed in worship. Moreover, the king, moreover, King Hezekiah and the leaders commanded the Levites to sing praise to the Lord with the word of David and of Asaph the seer. So they sang praises with gladness. They bowed their heads and worshipped. Then Hezekiah answered and said, Now that you have consecrated yourselves to the Lord, Come near and bring sacrifices and, and thank offerings into the house of the Lord. So the assembly brought sacrifices and thank offerings, and as many as were of a willing heart brought in burnt offerings. And the number of burnt offerings which the assembly brought was seventy bulls, one hundred rams, and two hundred lambs. All these were burnt offerings to the Lord. The consecrated things were six hundred bulls, three thousand sheep, and three thousand sheep. But the priests were too few, so that they could not skin all the burnt offerings. Therefore their brethren, the Levites, helped them until the work was ended, until the other priests had sanctified themselves, for the Levites were more diligent in sanctifying themselves than the priests. Also with burnt offerings, also the burnt offerings were in abundance, with the fat of the peace offerings, and with drink offerings for every burnt offering. So was the service of the house of the Lord set in order. Then Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced that God had prepared the place, that God had prepared the people, since the events took place so suddenly. <sighs> Second Chronicles, chapter 30. 
and Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and also wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, to keep the Passover of the Lord God of Israel. For the king and his leaders and all the assembly in Jerusalem had agreed to keep Passover in the second month, but they could not keep it at the regular time because a sufficient number of priests had not been consecrated had not consecrated themselves, nor had the people gathered together at Jerusalem. And the matter pleased the king and all the assembly. So they were they resolved to make a proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover to the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem, since they had not done it for a long time in a prescribed manner. Then the runners went throughout all Israel and Judah, and letters from the king and the leaders spoke according to the command of the king. Children of Israel, return to the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Then he will return to the remnant of you who have escaped from the hand of the kings of Assyria. A lot of reading, out of breath, out of time. Oh my gosh. Glory be to God. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. This concludes the next uh, this uh, this episode of the Bible. Thank you for watching. Glory be to God and blessings be upon you. Even more so if you've been watching since the beginning of this series. I understand it's a lot to watch, a lot to listen to, it's a lot to read. So please do it. <laughs> Glory be to God. My gosh, this is awesome. Silver Watchman, signing out.